Assalamu alaikum girls. Welcome to week 5 of term 2. In this week we are continuing chapter 10. We are going to talk about section 10.2 which is on the effective use of the internet. The objectives we need to cover as part of this lesson is to understand what are the fundamental terms used in as part of internet and what are the advantages and disadvantages of using internet. So let's get into it. As success criteria for this lesson, you need to at least be able to define the terms blog, wiki and social networking. As a challenge, you must be able to list the advantages and disadvantages of the internet. And as an extension task, we are going to think of some questions like why it's not easy to find reliable information on the internet. First, let's think, pause here and think about what are the advantages and disadvantages of using the internet. You can probably think of at least a couple of advantage and disadvantages. Let's move on and see if you came ac you will come across what you were thinking of. First, we are going to discuss some terms related to fundamentals of internet. A blog and a wiki. You must have heard at least the term blog before. A blog is something which is based on personal experiences and it is updated by one author on the internet. And usually blog entries will be in order of date of entry and you will see the most recent blog first. And you know a blog is updated by one person and it cannot be changed by other users on the internet. Also bloggers can be prosecuted for posting offensive material. So a blog is something where a person shares personal experiences on the internet. What's a wiki? An example of a wiki is a wikipedia which uh, all of you must have used for research at some point of time. A wiki is a collaboration of many users or many authors and they create the content together. And wikis can be actually edited by anyone and content can be edited or deleted. So if you make an account on Wikipedia, you can go ahead and edit the content of different Wikipedia articles. So clearly you can see the difference between a blog and a wiki. Whereas social networking is sites like Facebook, Snapchat, WhatsApp, Instagram, Skype, where you are allowed to interact and communicate with each other. You can connect people with similar interests also and you can follow pages of similar interest. You can share content like photo, videos and status updates. You can also create profiles and form relationships with other users. And also you can create pages to post and share articles. Our task one for today is the following past paper question. There is a cricket club and they are considering what are the different methods of allowing its spectators means the ones who are watching the cricket club to comment on the matches. For each uh, point given here we have to select whether a blog, a wiki or an email is the best way to do it. So the first one is if there is an interactive cricket club web, web page that needs to be viewed and edited by users. Clearly it says here it must be viewed and edited by users. Only wiki can allow multiple users to edit the same page. So the answer is wiki. Next they want to also keep an online journal which is written by the club secretary which is one person and nobody else needs to be able to edit those articles. So here the best choice for you would be a blog. The answer is blog. Also this cricket club wants to transmit some messages sent directly to the secretary of the cricket club. So transmission of messages the best way to do this would be using email. The last thing they would like to do is to have the club members not be able to edit any comments posted online. If uh, editing comments should not be allowed for club members, that's again something where only one person is writing it. So that is again an example of a blog. Now let's move on and think about the advantages and disadvantages of using the internet. 
when you think of using the internet some of the advantages are that unlike searching for information in books or encyclopedias the information on the internet is regularly updated in real time also it has a vast amount of information for which you don't have to travel to a library to get it and you can find and search the information that is relevant for you by using the search engines efficiently also we know that internet can be accessed from many devices and is available on many platforms this makes the internet more useful for us also internet contains different kinds of web content including text images video and so on all of these make internet very appealing for the user but when you think of the disadvantages there are a couple of disadvantages of using the internet as well this point we have discussed many times before that the internet is not regulated or policed this can cause a lot of issues for vulnerable users like small children and so on they can come across online threats like being hacked your viruses affecting your computer falling into scams sub cyber bullying that uh, vulnerable users might face these are all threats that exist online when you use the internet also when you are on the internet you can easily become distracted and move away from the actual objective which you were trying to do also on the internet people can share illegal content and for example share a copyright movie or a copyright game which was not supposed to be shared online this can be a disadvantage of internet as well also vulnerable users can be exposed to inappropriate material and all the information you see on the internet may not be reliable you might have to do some cross checking these are all the disadvantages of using internet i have a quizlet task for you let's try to go into this you can play this quizlet in learn mode where you will be asked to match each term and definition two times and this will be a practice for you for certain terms that we are covering i will do a couple as a sample and you can use the link to work on the rest a website which is created for the purpose of any user who has access to it and is able to edit it an example might be a wiki a business blog which is used by businesses let's try b blog maybe short for a web blog a web page which is a personal internet journal is a blog and so on you can do the rest so coming back to our slides let's see why the internet is so popular the reason the internet is so popular is because it has evolved over many years with the introduction of social networks media streaming online shopping online banking all of which has made the internet very user friendly for people also the fact that it is very accessible over various platforms including laptops tablets smartphones a desktop computers has made it useful for the users also the internet is relatively cheap to use and sometimes even free for example you get free wifi to use internet at cafes shopping malls and so on also increase in bandwidth has allowed for faster browsing and download speeds which is another reason internet has become so popular in the past couple of years why is an internet search to find relevant information not always very fast this is because you can have a danger of information overload whenever you use a search engine information overload means you get too much of information and all of it might not be relevant to what you are searching for and unless the user narrows down the search criteria it might take a long time for him to find particularly relevant information sometimes search engines also do something what do they do they place certain websites at the top of their search list to show them up first in the search results but then that website might not be exactly what you are looking for as a user this is called promoted content 
so for example if you run a search you will s on google you will see that some websites come on the top and it says add next to it that means it is ad or sponsored content these websites are paying google to be shown at the beginning of the search list but for you as a user searching for an information this might not be your relevant information also search engines rank up the time it takes to load up pages from a website and whenever a website responds fast that fastest website will be given the priority when the results appear on the screen so that means your order of results might not be according to your relevance but according to the speed of the web page loading this makes us think about why is it not always easy to find reliable information on the internet on the internet whatever you information you get through a search engine nobody is there to guarantee that that is accurate or unbiased anybody can set up a website and anyone can write what they like the material can be incorrect can be unverified and can even be biased this is one of the main disadvantages of the internet there is no authority in the background to check that the content is factually correct and showing you the correct information also sometimes search engines can suggest websites that have information which is completely out of date and not relevant anymore so if that's the case then how do we evaluate how can we know that the information we found on the internet is reliable and it is what we need so there are some small indicators for this one is that if there is a website with a lot of advertising a lot of ads that might be unreliable because that website is being set up and run only for making money also if there is a website which has ads relating to only its own products that might be an unreliable website as well when you see a url of a website the final part of the url can help you to identify the website's reliability so for example if the website ends in dot government or dot qa this lets you know that these websites are checked by those domains and are more reliable if you notice all the schools in qatar was made to change their urls to end in dot se sch dot qa this was because the ministry wanted to make sure that all the websites are same and are authenticated by them also another way is that you can check if responsible bodies have endorsed the website so for example in qatar for shopping websites there is a uh, an agency which checks that these websites are real and they give them a certification so the symbol of that certifying authority will be there on the website and that lets you know it's a proper real website also if the website has links to other reliable or unreliable website this tells you whether that website is reliable or unreliable if the website has testimonials of people using it this can indicate reliability as well also if the date of updating the website is very long time back this probably means it's outdated information and you are looking at an unreliable website now let's think of the following question as plenary why is it not always easy to find reliable information on the internet we know that it is not easy to find reliable information on the internet because there is nobody to guarantee the information you are seeing anybody can set up a website the material you see can be inaccurate unverified and biased and search engines can give you out of date information how can you evaluate the reliability of the information using all the methods we just discussed looking at the final part of the url looking where the hyperlinks lead to looking if there is excessive ads and if the ads are only relating to that particular website if there is uh, any body that has endorsed the website when it was last updated and so on so let's keep these things in mind when we use the internet so that we are safe users of the internet that's all for today girls hope to see you again next week assalamu alaikum